Hello and welcome to this video. We're setting up a Wi-Fi bridge today. Basically meaning we're going to connect our, our router to an existing Wi-Fi network and then we're going to bridge both bridge those connections for our devices here to connect to and we're also going to turn this into a basically a router as well. So there's different ways of connecting the wireless interface to another access point depending on what you want to use it for and I'll show you on both the app AX so using the newer uh, interface Wi-Fi menus as well as the older wireless interfaces so the Wi-Fi pre AC wave one and before we get into that if you're new to the channel if you've not seen this before I've recently done a couple of courses I started off with the beginning course and I've recently just launched this Wi-Fi specific course. So they'll give you hopefully a good grounding in all what I consider current and useful information that you need to get going. If you're a beginner or new to Microtik, Wi-Fi in particular will go through all the various cats, mans, the difference between the different packages, the evolution from the AC to AX and then authentication and other useful tips along the way. In the description below, I've got a discount code for 20% off. That'll work on both of these courses. However, if you, do, if you do purchase one, you'll be able to get the second one for 50% off as well. So check those out. If you have any questions, please let me know. So my setup, I've got this um, CAP AX, which I'm using as my, my wireless network. So this could just be an access point connected to a router. However, I'm also running it as the router as well, just for simplicity. I've got two networks on here. I've got an upstream WAN which is ether one and then my uh, i've got a bridge which includes the wi-fi interfaces in it so then devices can connect to this uh, network and get internet access so as i mentioned we're going through using a hap ax2 and then also the hap ac uh, ac light this is ac wave one so difference in menus this one uses the older menu setup, which was basically the standard in Router S Pre 7. And then we've got the newer, extra the Wi Fi QCOM, which is the newer package, which runs the, the newer access points and uh, wireless interfaces. Difference in menu, different in layout and the ways of doing everything. So, as I mentioned about that course, if you want to find out more and the differences and how to configure a a Wi-Fi for both, that would be a really good place to start. However, we're just going to concentrate on bridging one of these interfaces with that existing Wi-Fi. So we start on the, the HAP AX. On here I have a bridge, as I do on the CAP as well, with just a single interface, which is the one that this PC is connected to. I've just disabled that for the moment. I'll show you that I've done the same on the, on the other one. So again, bridge, just call it land bridge. And it's got a disabled interface. Okay, nothing else really to it. So go back to the HAP AX2. So yeah, let's start by connecting. So we've got the two interfaces here, Wi-Fi one and Wi-Fi two. Uh, on this one is Wi-Fi one is the five gig, and Wi-Fi two is the two point four. So we'll go ahead and connect the five gig. We could then use two as our effectively as our uh secondary uh, client facing so you could create like your own sort of uh, wi-fi extender and then provide 2.4 to your local clients and then 5 gig or this could be like if you've taken this to you know rented accommodation something like that and you want to uh, not have to reconfigure your devices you could create this and then just connect this one to your provided wi-fi and then use all your devices to connect to this one so Basically, we've got on the first tab on the on directly on the interface itself, we have this mode option. By default, it's going to be AP, so it's going to be as an access point. But then we're going to create a, basically a station and a station bridge. So I'm going to start off using station bridge, and then as I do it, I'll show you the differences. Uh, then we go to scan. This will basically scan everything on that interface, all the available SSIDs. When we click start. There we go, and this is my test one. This is on the five gig frequency. Just click connect. Okay. So that's now set up to connect. We click okay. 
But if we jump back onto our Wi-Fi, our access point, and we look at registration, you see that nothing's still connected. And that's because on here, I've got a, my security that I'm using. I've got basically just a password set. So just basic PSK for security. So what I just need to do is back in this interface is then just go onto the security tab and then match those settings, which is basically just the password. Apply, don't, you don't have to match everything. It will use by, basically by default, it will match those other ones. Click OK. Now if we go back to here, the registration, now you can see there I am connected. OK. So that's pretty much it. But the reason I chose Station Bridge is what that now means is my bridge here, as I mentioned, I've got my device connected to this interface. So if I go ahead and uh, enable this, and now I can add that Wi-Fi 1, remember it was Wi-Fi 1 I did, into the bridge. And now on my client, I can do a IP config. There we go. And that's the IP address of my Ethernet interface, which is connected to my HAP AX2. And then if we look at the IP range, that is in fact the IP range on here. So if we go to IP DHCP server and look at the leases, you see there's two leases. So that the HAP and then there's my uh, device with its IP address. So that's basically creating a bridge. So that's why I created, I chose the the option of station bridge. So basically AP access point is the device that th things connect to. Station is like the client. But station bridge then allows you to then bridge through that client device is exactly what we're doing. So we're basically created a Wi-Fi extender or if we've got a bunch of devices in the area that has no that don't have Wi-Fi, so if you've got a printer or a server or PC or something like that that doesn't have a wireless interface on it, and you can't get cable in there, or if it's just a temporary thing, you could then have your MicroTik providing connectivity, and instead of creating a separate whole separate network and worrying about routing, you now everything's still on that same layer two broadcast domain. However, now if we select station and apply wait for it to reconnect if I was to do a renew on here basically it's not going to get an IP address once that's set now a station was opposed to station bridge we just need to remove that interface out of our bridge and now what our bridge is going to do is we're going to give it an ip address there we go so there's an ip address already associated with that bridge and that's our lan facing so that's for our clients now so instead of our clients getting an ip address from our upstream uh, wi-fi it's now getting one from the local device just need to create a firewall rule which is going to basically nap behind that interface like you would do on any router setup so the upstream network actually sees the connection coming from its local IP which we then need to get by giving an IP client again so we're just treating that Wi-Fi interface as our upstream WAN connection so like you would do from your ISP so its IP address now is the upstream and we're going to basically NAT and route behind that interface. Now if we load up here, we just do an IP config. So we now got an IP address from the local router as opposed to the that 192 address which we were getting before. We can then do a trace route. To the internet. And now it goes via the to my app and then across the Wi-Fi to that Wi-Fi access point and then onwards.
to the internet. So that's pretty much it. Very simple. And that's the difference between station and station bridge. So bridge is station bridge. If you want to bridge those interfaces together, so have Wi-Fi interface bridged with uh, all the ports on the device, as well as you could then add that other Wi-Fi device in there and turn that into an AP as it is by default. So you can then set this up as an access point for your client device to connect to. Or like I said, if it's just for connectivity, local ethernet, physical ports, and then station, if you want to basically turn it into a standalone router with a separate network, and then everything's going to route behind that interface. That's how you do it with our AX. So then we'll go ahead and back in the bridge and I'll just disable this port. So my laptop doesn't connect for it anymore. Okay, now on to our HAP AC. So again, looking at our interfaces, WLAN 1 and WLAN 2, different from the uh, AX variant, the uh, where it's Wi-Fi 1 and 2. Now we're dealing with WLAN 1 as being the 2.4 and WLAN 2 as being the 5 gig. So let's go ahead and use our 5 gig interface. Simply open up the interface itself. And we go on to this uh, scan option like we did before. Just click start. Again, select our SSID and click connect. Where that will go ahead and populate all of uh, the information. The only thing is we can't add the security PSK directly on here. As you can see by default, the security profile it has is this default one. So in there, we just go and we add, change it to dynamic keys, select WPA2 PSK one uh, version one and two, and then just stick in your password you need to connect. Obviously you would need to match this with your upstream authentication. Okay. So then now the default option is going to give you is this mode station. By default, the interface will be AP bridge, which is the, how you would use it as an access point. Uh, if you remember before on the AX one, we had that station and station bridge and I showed you the difference. However, the caveat with this is, and I'll show you what happens if we use station bridge here and apply it. Okay. You'll notice that it's going to fail to connect. Okay, if I slip, switch to station, and apply. Okay, wait for it to connect. There we are, registered. Now, if I do that process where I added the interface into the bridge, so I select WLAN 2, which is the one I used, into the LAN bridge. Okay, and that is registered. But then watch what happens. For a few minutes there we go so it disconnects and it'll reconnect and disconnect if we go to my access point slash router and look at the logs there you go see it connecting and disconnecting frequently so the reason for this is this device here that i'm connected to is the ax okay we're running that wi-fi mini the same as the hap ax this is legacy, this is the older AC stuff. So while it allows to connect using station, the difference between station and station bridge, uh, as the bridge bit suggests, the bridge it means it's layer two. So it creates that layer two bridging of those two interfaces, like we did with the, the AX one I showed you, we connected when we had it as a station, it was running as a separate router. And then when I put it into station bridge mode, my laptop connected directly through to the same network that the access point was giving out. So basically, if you think of it, station is uh, layer three, so IP addresses, and then station bridge is your layer two, okay? But we can't use station bridge uh, on this device if our device we're connecting to is, is the newer AX variety, okay? It has to be one of the legacy same chipsets basically has to match. So what we can do is select station again, as we've got it on, just need to remove it from this bridge. And it just means we're going to have to run this as an, uh, as a separate router. So if you are planning on using this and you're, you know, is extending your 
uh, network access in your in your house or somewhere you want your client devices to connect um, what you're going to have to do is they're going to have to then route so you either do what i'm going to show you now where we nat or on your upstream router access point whatever you're connecting it to you'll then have to route have a route for the network we're going to have on the LAN side here so i'll show you that now so as you can see it'll stay connected if i go ahead and go to addresses so that's my uh, LAN ip address and then i just need to go to the http server and enable the HP server I've created for that interface. I will do a renew to get an IP address. So there we go. So it has an IP address. And then under the firewall, remember we need to then NAT behind that IP address. So uh, source NAT outbound interface of the upstream so wlan2 action masquerade okay and then get an ip address as well to route, actually route behind as well so dhb client add that to wlan2 okay you can see so that now has the ip address which is getting from this device and my laptop is getting an IP address from this device and then I'm natting up upstream so then I can do a uh, trace route to the internet there we go so that's now going upstream and it just means that the traffic that's hitting here is going to be natted behind the IP address that it's it's given out so if I look at uh, ETH uh, Wi-Fi 1 do a torch there you go see i was pinging or trace routing to that ip address as you can see the traffic's coming from 242 which is actually the ip address and that's basically what nat is doing so the upstream router sees its traffic coming from uh the ip address that it's given out here okay so that's the only way around that otherwise other than that you could then do a add a static route to, so if you if this was in your house and you wanted to RDP or something to a, a machine that was connected on your bridge device you would need to obviously route to it rather than and having that they wouldn't allow that so you just have to put a static route in here which would say 172 uh, 16 2.0 uh, I think it was slash 24 the gateway being the IP address that it's getting that uh, that IP address okay so as it routes out it will then know how to route back and that's how you get around that not being able to create that bridge if your upstream obviously device was so if this well, this one sorry if the the cap that I'm using as my upstream network Wi-Fi network router was uh, the older version and using that interface wireless menu not the new Wi-Fi menu then obviously then you could use that station bridge and then create uh, your layer two tunnel, basically, or not tunnel, your layer two bridge between those networks. So hopefully that was clear enough. If you want me to do a, a video showing you how to create the bridge on the legacy devices, then, then let me know, I'm happy to do that. However, you know, the more likely scenario is you'll be using some, at some point, an AX variant within your network as well. The other thing to say, be, it's worth mentioning that you can probably use this station option on both devices on other devices that aren't Microtik. So if you've got a, a, another a non-Microtik wireless network that you want to connect the Microtik to, then again, you'd have to use that station on both your AX and your, your AC as well. So. Anyway, any questions, comments, thoughts, let me know in the comments. And if not, I'll say uh, thanks for watching and see you on the next one.